we've got a returning friend of the station, friend of the show, just generally one of our men, one of our own. Thank you very much, Gordon. Kelly Jones. See, should just guess it from the accent, can you? <laughs> the beautiful lilt. This new song is called "Fly Like an Eagle." Tell us the story. What's it all about? Where it come from? Uh, well, I, I guess the whole album, really. I mean, I finished. I finished touring the last album in in Brooklyn, a place called uh, Brooklyn Steel. That was the last show last September. We did a bit of a Beastie Boys cover as well, just to finish off. That was quite cool. What well, what song? Um, I think we did Fight Fear, right? Oh yes. Yeah. But we didn't tell the crew we were doing it, so there was a lot of surprise faces <laughs> inside of the stage. So anyway, um, but I'd got to the point, I think we'd been out for about 18 months, and I wasn't sick of playing, but I was getting getting quite tired of, because the show lasted like two and a half hours, but there was a lot of time during the day where I was doing nothing, really. Mm-hmm. A lot of dead time. And I was getting a bit fed up of it after 24 years, where I had hotel rooms and all the rest of it. Even though it's the best job in the world, you get to the end of it, and you could be like, oh, I'm done now. So when I came back, I'd... Um, I didn't have writer's block, or I've never really had writer's block or anything like that, but I just didn't feel like um, doing anything. I mm-hmm. felt like stopping for a change and see what would happen when I stopped. And I didn't really like stopping, it turned out. After about two, <laughs> three months, I thought, well, it's not stopping this really doing it. And all these songs started to happen. And they just started to kind of channel through me, really. And they began telling me what was going on with my head or whatever I was feeling or whatever. And they started informing me about things I felt I was going through. And it became quite a very, I guess, a very vulnerable kind of honest personal record about stuff I was feeling at the time. And I didn't really think I'd ever release a lot of the songs because they were just coming through in a very natural way. The, the lyrics were just pi- f- flying out onto the page and stuff like that. And the really personal stuff. Yeah, yeah. and I didn't really, um, I didn't really care if anybody liked it or anything like that at the time I was doing it. You know, it was just much more about kind of a cathartic experience, really. Yeah. And. Um, I just didn't. I did, didn't know what was going to happen with the record because I felt it had a very much a, a very country slant to it. Um, and I guess "Fly Like an Eagle" is is about that really. I thought it was about I needed to stop, but I think it was much more about needing to make some changes, uh, be a bit kind of literally kinder to myself as well, give myself an hard time about a lot of stuff, mm-hmm. um, and make some changes really and get out of the comfort zone a little bit. So I guess you know when the line came out. Um, Fly Like an Eagle and Dare to Reborn, it, it wasn't so much a religious thing. It was much more about um, just being a bit more open to new things and changing things yeah. in my life. You've had a great record of supporting incredible bands from the Rolling Stones and the Chilies all the way through, but if yeah. you could support any other artist, who would it be? We did Bowie's last tour in America, yeah. which was amazing. I, I was telling a story about that the other day. Like we were doing these sound checks before Bowie, and we would sit there and... You know, because he was watching us do the sound check every day, we would play like oh, about thirty seconds of this song and about forty seconds of that song, just trying out different guitars because all different tunings and capos. Yeah, and he'd be there watching, and then did there about five songs, and, and I'd walk off the side of the stage, and he he put his arm around me and walk back to the dressing room, and he'd go, you know, if you extended a few of those songs, you might be onto something. <laughs> <laughs> on the wind up though yeah, yeah, yeah brilliant yeah, that is great. he had a proper sense of humour he was lovely yeah. Kelly Jones now Kelly I will often blow smoke up your backside right and this is a reason that I think people should applaud you because you've just been on holiday mm. as a rock star to Wales that's <laughs> it <laughs> we'll applaud that rock, could have gone anywhere in the world went to Wales on holiday <laughs> after the Swansea gig caravan on the beach didn't you I went to Wales I had a it was good actually saw the folks my brothers and that yeah yeah, it was good. Your mad brother. Yeah, that that gig. He's yeah, mad. I see mad. him and I think, oh no, oh, hide. I know. I was. Yeah, he was on one that night as well. See, at Swansea, yeah. like I noticed. I think he had his some of them. It was really funny that night after Swansea because I had all the kids in in, yeah. in the hotel room like bunk beds and, and they all had different beds and then they all ended up sleeping in the big double beds and I literally slept in a fold out camp bed that night. <laughs> I just played to thirty five thousand people. Right, everybody was having a mash up. Yeah, yeah. And I literally looked around. I went in the shower. I came out and everybody was kipping and I slept in a in a fold out camp bed. Yeah, you know your place. Don't and then you? I, the next morning I took him to McDonald's. And that's it. And then you went off around the beaches yeah, of Wales. Did I, you get any peace? In uh, Wales? Nah, it was it was it was good though, especially yeah. after that weekend. It was a good. Camp. Radio X. Radio.